but I wanted to make sure I sent you out with the best information that I could give you before you went making those decisions and choices. And I don't want you to waste a lot of money on curriculum that ends up not working for your family. This is going to be eight things to consider before you go shopping for your curriculum, before you purchase your curriculum. Hi friends, welcome back to Calm in the Chaos Homeschool. My name is Davine and I am mom to four kids, ages nine to 13. And on my channel, I cover curriculum reviews, how we homeschool in our home, curriculum updates on how our curriculum's working in our family. And right now I'm working on a series of how to start homeschooling. So you're in the middle of that series right now. So if you're interested in seeing the beginning of that series, go ahead and go to, I think it's right here, the card right here, and that will take you to the beginning of the playlist if you want to start from the beginning. Originally, I said that I was going to be working on giving you curriculum resources and maybe some things to look at if you followed a certain homeschooling style. But then when I was planning out those videos, first of all, I realized that there's no way I could make one long video covering all the styles and all the possible curriculum choices. There are just too many to name in one video. So I'm going to be making a series of shorter videos that are going to tell you examples of what resources. So that way you can pick and choose which videos more apply to you and what styles resonated with you. And I didn't want to be irresponsible and give you all those resources before I gave you a few tips and a few things that I have learned in the past little while and I'm sure other homeschoolers have learned in their curriculum choices and pickings, just a few tips before you go in and start purchasing your curriculum. That being said, there's no way to correctly pick all your curriculum. You will make mistakes, that's just part of the learning and growing process. And I think that even homeschoolers who have been homeschooling for a really long time still make choices that don't exactly fit their family or their child and they just don't work. So it's not like you're failing if you pick some things that don't work for your family. It's very normal, but I think that it probably happens less and less as you homeschool longer and longer. So I just wanted to give you eight things to consider before you go purchasing your curriculum. And I'm gonna have a bonus tip at the very end. So stick around if that's something you're interested in seeing. So consideration number one is what are your homeschool goals? What do you want your homeschool to look like? So part of this is the style. What homeschooling style or philosophy or philosophies did you most identify with? And what do you want your homeschool to look like? As well as what are your priorities for your homeschool this year or for each child this year? What are your priorities or what is your priority for each child or for your homeschool this year? This is going to change from year to year as you go through your homeschooling journey, you're going to need to focus on different things. And so just remember, you cannot focus on everything. You can focus on a few things every year. So what are the most important things you need to focus on this year? Along with that, I wanted to add, you need to decide if you want your homeschool to incorporate your worldview or your religion or you would like a secular homeschool. So that is a consideration that you wanna be looking at before you start purchasing your curriculum. A lot of curriculums do have a Christian worldview. So I'll be sharing both types of curriculum in my upcoming videos, but on my channel, I don't necessarily use one or the other, but we are a Christian homeschool. And I absolutely love that I can incorporate my worldview into our day-to-day -day life, into our everyday conversations, into our homeschool. So that's one thing that you need to think about before you get started. Are you wanting to involve your beliefs and your worldview into your homeschool? Or is that something you want to keep separate? So the second thing, to consider when you're making curriculum choices is your child. You need to know your child. So a lot of people talk about figuring out what kind of learning style their children are. So the three kinds are visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. So visual learners learn more from seeing, from reading for themselves, from posters, from diagrams, things like that. Auditory learners like to hear it. So maybe they love to listen to audiobooks. Maybe they love to listen to you read. They love that audio 
input, that is how they learn best. And then kinesthetic learners have to touch and move and jump and they're just very active learners. And when they can incorporate their whole body, that's when they learn best. And many people and children are a combination of those. It's maybe more of a spectrum as far as where each child goes. And it doesn't hurt to incorporate all those things into your homeschool, especially when you have multiple children, but that's something to consider. The other things to consider about your children are, what are their strengths? What are things that you can work on and develop and improve in their strengths? What are their weaknesses? Where do they need to grow? Where are the gaps that need to be filled? What are their passions? How can you incorporate their passions into your homeschool and their interests? So those are all things you wanna think about for each child and then for your family when you're considering homeschool curriculum. Consideration number three, this is one that you cannot forget. What is your teaching style? You need to take yourself into consideration. You are the teacher, so you need to get curriculum that you will actually implement. If you won't implement the curriculum that you get, then there is no point in you buying that curriculum. So are you one who wants to be reading a lot aloud to your children? Do you want to be teaching as many children together as you can? Are you one that wants to do hands-on activities and have all these different things and just doing a lot of projects? Is that what you want to do? Do you want to be outdoors more? Do you want to be indoors more? What can you implement? What do you have time to implement? What do you have the resources to implement? So for example, I am not a huge activities mom. I don't love activities, but I do make an effort to put activities into my homeschool. That being said, I will not purchase a curriculum that a main component is activities on a daily basis or even a weekly basis. If I feel like that's the primary part of the curriculum, I might be wasting my money if I got a curriculum that is so hands-on activity based. Of course, I need to take into account that my kids are hands-on learners. They like to learn that way. So I will pick and choose activities, but I sprinkle them throughout my homeschool. I don't get a curriculum that is basically activities. I love literature. I love reading. So we do a lot of reading and I like teaching all my children together. So that's how I incorporate that into my homeschool. So the fourth consideration is your budget versus your time. If you have a large budget, you might be able to purchase curriculum that doesn't take as much time to put all the pieces together. You can purchase the science kits that come with all the pieces. You can purchase curriculum that is more done for you. You can purchase just more complete curriculums in general. The more you pay, the more complete curriculums you will get. That being said, if you have a smaller budget, you can also teach and homeschool. Please don't hear me that you can't homeschool if you don't have a big budget. But if you have a smaller budget, you may have to spend a little more time putting things together. For example, if you want to go with a unit study approach, you could do that with very little, very low budget if you have a library card. So you can go to the library and get a bunch of books. You can choose the book as your spine. You can put to pieces together to make activities, have a notebook, have a pencil, have your kids do research, and you really don't need to purchase a large curriculum in order to do that. But it might take a little more time in your planning. So you kind of have to balance those things out. Often, if you have a higher budget, you might not have to do as much planning or searching, searching out that free curriculum. And there is a lot of free or very low cost curriculum out there, but you might have to spend a little more time seeking it out, printing it off, adapting it for your children. So there's this balance there. What's your budget? and then balance that with your time. How much time do you have to develop the curriculum that you would like for your children? So the fifth consideration that you need to take into account is your schedule or when you wanna homeschool. Do you wanna homeschool year round? Do you wanna homeschool according to a more traditional schedule? Do you wanna homeschool Tuesday through Saturday because your husband is off on Mondays and Tuesdays? Do you only have three days or two days to homeschool your children and you need them to be relatively independent on the other days because maybe you have a part-time job or you're a single 
single parent who has to work, you need to take that into consideration. So when you are looking at curriculum, think about your life and where is homeschool going to fit into your life and how much time on those days will you have to homeschool. So one thing that I tend to do a lot of is I end up purchasing more curriculum than I can fit into my life, my instructing times. I tend to buy more than I can fit into the boundaries that I've put on our formal education time. So that is something to keep in mind. You can only implement what you have the time to implement. So think about what you want your days to look like when you're going to be homeschooling, how many days you have to homeschool, and consider that when you're purchasing the curriculum. So a sixth consideration is your family phase of life. How old are your children? How many children do you have? Do you have babies and toddlers at this time? Think about how much can your kids do on their own and how much are they going to need you one-on-one -on -one, and how much could you teach them as a group? Are there kids that you could group together and teach them all at the same time? And maybe you have some, but you'll have a toddler. So this comes into the scheduling too. Will you be able to teach your four children while your toddler's running around or do you need to reserve like nap time for that. So that's something to think about your phase of life. As your phases of life change, your homeschool is going to change as well. So maybe you can think about which kids can be a little more independent, which kids are pretty much going to need you sitting next to them when they're doing their schoolwork, and then which kids might be not officially in school, but are going to be maybe throwing tiny wrenches into your homeschool day and make plans for that. So that's something to think about when you're planning your homeschool curriculum. So a seventh thing to think about is are you going to be the only teacher of your children this year? Or do you plan on joining a co-op? Or do you have a spouse who's also going to help, who could teach a few subjects? Do you have grandparents, aunts and uncles who want to be involved in your homeschool and you want them to be involved? Do they have specific subjects that they could teach? When could they teach those things? So. In considering all of those things, especially like if you're going to join a co-op, that is going to be some time that's taken out of your homeschool day at home. But also maybe they'll be taking some of the subjects that you may have thought you needed to teach off your plate as well. So you need to think about what kind of co-ops are we going to be a part of and how is that going to affect our homeschooling schedule? How is that going to affect the curriculum that I need to purchase? And who will be teaching this curriculum or who will be teaching these subjects to my children and maybe they want to pick the curriculum that they're going to teach since they are the teacher and their teaching style should be taken into account. And my last one, my eighth consideration before my bonus point, so stick around for my bonus point, but my last one is have you checked your state laws and regulations? Now, I don't feel like any of the states in the United States will make your homeschool very different, but there are certain states that have certain subjects and they want you to teach certain things either throughout the year or throughout the years. In my case in Washington, there are 11 subjects that we have to teach, but it does not say when we have to teach it, how often we have to teach it, how long we have to teach it. So really, I don't really worry myself about that. I know that all those subjects will be taught at some point to my children because I want to teach them all the things. So I don't have to worry about that too much, but you might want to check your state regulations and see, oh, do I have to teach a state history course at some point? And when will I include that? Will I do this this year or next year? Or do I have to do it every year? And so that's something you want to consider before you go out making all your curriculum purchases. My final tip, my bonus tip is purchase less than you think you'll need, especially if you're new. And I'm telling you this from my own experience, purchase less than you think you'll need. And when you're just starting homeschooling, it's okay to just start with the basics and get the basics going before you start adding all the extracurriculars. And if you have young children, really, you do not have to teach anything more than some basic math and their reading or writing or wherever they are in their language art development. The rest will come. You can add as you want to, but 
start with the basics and then start looking for those other enrichment activities, those other things to add. If you have an older student, you might have to start out a little earlier. Say you have a middle schooler or a high school student and you feel like you need to cover science more formally or history more formally. Of course, go ahead and get the basic subjects, but maybe the electives, you might wanna wait and see how your homeschool is going before you go and purchase their art or their coding class or their finance class or all those other things that you want your children to learn. Sometimes it's okay to just wait and see how the basics are going first. So thanks for sticking around with me today. Thanks for coming and watching this video. I hope these are helpful tips for you and that you will be able to keep these things in mind when you're looking at curriculum. I do have those videos coming up with all the different styles and some curriculum that I've heard of or I have used myself and I can give you all the resources for those. So I'll be making a series of videos. So keep your eye out for those. Please give me a like if this video was helpful for you and you think it'd be helpful to other homeschooling parents and don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell notification if you want to see my future videos. Thank you for coming. I so enjoy having this time with you and I love our chat. So please do comment below if you have any more tips for other homeschoolers. We would love to hear it. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye everybody. Mm -hmm.